Welcome back to Premier Twin 8 Project. This is part two of the phase shift oscillator. Whether you're building this amp or building some other amp, this is applicable to any phase shift oscillator circuit design that you may have. I'm going to go through a quick review of what we went through last time. Uh, I'll show you the equation for when the resistors and capacitors are not equal. This is the basic 12AX7 series oscillator. Uh, we'll go through the amplifier calculations, the spreadsheet, how to set the bias capacitor, and practical limits of this design, and any other recommendations I would have for you. Now then, quick review. Barkhausen equation. Amplification times beta equals 1. A is the open loop uh, gain uh, amplifier, and B is the positive feedback network. It's met when it's A times beta is equal to 1, and that means I have a phase shift of 180 degrees through the amplifier. I add another 180 degrees to it, which turns it back to this original form at the input of the amplifier. That completes 360 degrees of the cycle, and the equation is satisfied. So long as we don't lose uh, any, have losses through the amplification and the signal decays, and it doesn't mean it will, it's just, again, it should oscillate. This is the basic amplifier schematic. The amplifier and the RC network shown in the box below. This is the RC circuit that we're dealing with. And the last time we covered all the resistors and capacitors are the same value. It simplified so that we could develop the equations for uh, calculating the, the amplification for one stage, and the phase shift for one stage, and then the amplification factor for three stages. Engineers make assumptions in order to simplify the math to understand the perfect world before applying it into the imperfect world. So we take some shortcuts, but we have to understand it first and then we'll put it to use. Last time we said, here's beta for the network. This is what gives rise to the amplification factor, which I'll show in the next slide. And below, this is the real imaginary part for beta for a three-stage amplifier. That reduces each of them down to this. Here's a simple basic math. This is the, the origin of the numbers that you see out in the Internet. For a single stage, the amplification factor is simple math. It's 8. And for three stages, it will be 29. In practical terms, it's plus or minus a little bit. It could be 27 to as much as 31, depending on the circuit and the component specifications. There's no guarantee, not in the project we're dealing with. Phase shift doesn't uh, come free. Every time we go through a phase shift, we lose some magnitude to the waveform, which means we have to boost its energy again so it will sustain oscillation. This is a circuit in the Premier Twin A project. You'll see two amplifiers. V3A is the amplifier for the phase shift oscillator circuit on the left. On the right, V3B takes that signal and amplifies it and ejects it to the input along with the signal coming in to the final, the, the, the 7591 uh, tube file, which is the amplifier for the amp. Now, the, why do they use S3 here? There's a lot of things that we can do to stop oscillation and hope that it restarts. One is we could ground pin 3, pin 8, and it'll stop. Once you ground out the cathode, it'll stop os oscillation. We also could go to C R17, 18, or 19 and open the circuit, converting it from a three-stage oscillator to a two-stage circuit. It'll stop oscillation. Now then, they put S3 in because once the frequency leaves V3A and goes to V3B, then it's amplified and injected. So if we cut or ground out that output, V3B stops sending a signal. Its signal is grounded. Its output signal is grounded. 
it wants to oscillate, but we've grinded out the output signal. It's not going anywhere. The tremolo is turned off. Meanwhile, B3A is still oscillating. Once we have the tube amp warmed up and the oscillator is oscillating, you don't want to do anything to stop it because it, in order to restart, it may be milliseconds, it could be seconds, it may be never. So, to satisfy the demand of having on off with it somewhat, if it's already oscillating and guaranteed it's continuous oscillating, the B3B was part of the design for this amp and probably other amps as well. And we ground out the output signal. Very slick solution. Now then, going and looking at the oscillator itself, B3A, the amplifier, you'll see R20 and R21. Notice, if you're familiar with these phase shift oscillators, R17, 18, and 19, they, they aren't connected directly to ground. That's typically what they're done, but they're floating above zero because of R21. R20, R21, I'm going to redraw that to look like this. So R20, R21 are combined for the cathode resistor to 7800 ohms. Now then technically, R4, I renumbered these things to match the spreadsheet. So if you're using it for this design or something else, you can follow along with the spreadsheet. So R4, R21, has been moved over at 6800. So basically, they put a ground lift in to what you would typically ground out R1 through R3. Why do they do that? We've got to figure out a way to keep, get this thing to oscillate. So the tube naturally oscillates. It's trying to. It's going into some sort of thermal effect. And we're trying to get that uh, upset to go in to drive the oscillating circuit. RK, it's floating somewhere above zero. And R4 is floating somewhere above zero. So between those three points, one of the three things are going to give us that shot effect because of thermal uh, effect and get this oscillator to start. So that's probably why they ended up where they are on this. Now then, we're going, I've, I've reduced it down to a typical oscillator circuit. Notice R1 through R3 are now connected straight to ground. This is the schematic that shows up in the spreadsheet. So you can put the values in for your resistors and capacitors and also calculate the gain of the amplifier. I promised at the very beginning of the series I would provide you spreadsheets that would do the math for you and that is where this is going. So then, before we get there, all the resistors and capacitors are not the same value. You can look at the Premier 28 uh, schematic and they're not the same. How do you calculate frequency? Here's the frequency. If all the resistors and capacitors are the same value, it's this. We've developed this from the last uh, video, but what if they're not the same? Not to be, not to lose it here, but you go out on the internet and find this equation. Someone else has done the technical math for this. There's plenty of papers out there uh, that have derived this. You don't actually have to go to Wiki to find this, although that's a quick find. There are technical papers that have derived this, and they do match. So I'll go, woo, okay, it, the, the equation on Wiki matches everything else I've seen, the technical papers, by the other, en other engineers were good there. So is it the same equation? For those of you who aren't engineers or have math is probably not something you uh, relish, the equation is shown at the top and what I've done is changed out R1, R2, R3, same for capacitors, and made them all the same variable, which is shown in the equation too. All the R's are the same, so I've combined terms and then I simplified the terms and lo and behold, the top equation and the bottom equation are the same equation for expressing what the frequency value is for the various resistor and capacitor values. Now then, here's a spreadsheet. You can go to my website, deepblueheart.com, and download this. It's available to you. On the right is the schematic again with the uh, variable names that you'll put on the left, and on the left you'll see boxes in order from the black box at the top to the red box down below. Uh, what we need to put the input values, to check the amplification factor, and finally check out whether or not the amplification factor is sufficient to sustain oscillation, if it should oscillate. So in the spreadsheet, you'll find that for the mid-band gain, 
it is mu times load resistor divided by the quantity of load resistor and the resistance of the plate all the way down to the bottom. So I've shown you the basic calculations there so you can check and verify and change if you like. And then we start with the first set of values. I put in R1 through R3 and the capacitor values and right off the bat when the, the potentiometer set to its big largest value, 2 meg, the frequency is 1.9 hertz. The amplification factor is 61. That is not the value in the Barkhausen criteria that we need to compare. We're not going to compare 61 to 29. There's another part of this that we need to go through. And that is, remember, we've added R4 into it. So when you see the 2 meg, it's R4 plus a potentiometer only goes down to about 1,000 thousand ohms. So 1,000 ohms plus 6,800 gives me the 2 meg plus 7,800 ohms. You can put 2 meg in, it's not going to change the world, but technically that's the way I like running this. The output impedance is then calculated, and then after we calculate the output impedance, what is the recommended optimized capacitor value for the 1.9 hertz? It is shown here. It is 60 microfarads, and now then it has a loss. So the loss is a 0.65 gain value. So you multiply 61 times a 0.65, and we have a true amplification times gain, degradation value of 40. Is 40 larger than 29? That is the, the, the test that we have to go through, and yes, it's greater than 29. This thing should oscillate. Now then, turning it down, the potentiometer down to its lowest value, 1,000 plus a 6,800, or 7800, then the frequency we derive is 6, and the gain is 61. So at a higher frequency, I don't have as much gain loss. And the recommended bias capacitor is 18. You probably have to put 21, 22 microfarad in there. But then that gives me an amplification factor times the gain is 49. 49 squared and 29 should oscillate. But this design on the schematic shows 100. Okay, they're trying to get a, a to sustain the lowest frequency possible, so I need a larger capacitor. They put 100 in. That gives me a larger uh, amplification loss. So this is minus 4.8 dB rather than three and a half. That times the 61 gives me 35 for the gain for the Barkhausen criteria that I need. Is 35 greater than 29? Great. Will it oscillate? It should. It's above 29. So that's the reason I put it in there. It, you can put in 150 in there, which it helps sustain a lower uh, frequency oscillation, but it will come at a cost. As soon as you approach 150 or 170 microfarads, the gain goes to 6 and it drops me below, drops me straight down to 29. It may not oscillate. So there are practical limits to the Premier Twin 8 circuit. 1 hertz is about the lowest practical frequency these circuits will sustain. As the cathode capacitor approaches 1 or goes over 100, microfarads, say 150, 170 microfarads, the gain will exceed a 6 dB loss. And that drops the comparative value, the amplification value of the, of the amplifier times the loss of the filter will drop you down to 29. Will it sustain oscillation? Might. Uh, it is 29 a hard and fast rule? No. The value should be somewhere, it could be as low as 27, depending. It could be as high as 31, or somewhere in there. But for practical reasons, I like keeping around 35-ish or above. And I know then that as I build one and another, another, and, uh, adjusting the values to adjust the frequency range, as long as I'm at 35 and above, I'm pretty much guaranteed-ish this will oscillate. I hope you find this useful. I hope I've contributed to your understanding a little bit better about this circuit. 
and I hope that you also download the spreadsheet and find value with it. And if you have any recommendations and comments, please uh, send them to me. Thanks again.